Hello. Blue. We are up to 1814, I believe. All righty. 1814. Ooh, new angle. <laughs> Closer to the mic, maybe. Oh, I see. Okay, so, Ruach ish yechal kel mahalehu the Ruach Nechea Mi Yisa'ena. This is a tough, tough one. Uh, first half should be doable, at least as an initial translation. Even without looking at, uh, at Targumim. Well, I think we did not translate Ruach. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you, you know how to translate, you just don't know how to define it, right? No, I, I, I there's like five different meanings in my head, in my head and I'm like, Right, meanings, but translations well, I think is all the same, right? I mean, well, I guess there's two translations, possibly two. I don't, I don't know what is a translation and what is like uh -huh. translation. <laughs> right. Spirit. Spirit, there you go, right? So spirit is one, okay. right? And there are many different meanings for spirit, but it's, I think it's like universally translated as spirit. Uh, I guess the other two translations, which I don't think even are candidates here, are uh, wind or direction, but I don't think those, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Ruchish. Uh, Spirit of a person, Yichalkel uh, Machlehu. So I think we're only familiar. We're, we're familiar with Yichalkel from Shimon Esrei. Machalkel Chaim Bechesed. How do you translate Machalkel? Oh yeah. <laughs> ah yes, that is uh, not, not 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 the same word. Although you can you can theorize about the whole uh, you know sure Russian relationships. Yeah. Uh, preserve is that right? <laughs> Sorry, Zev, what was that? I had the volume all the way down. I didn't hear you. Oh, does it mean preserve? Yeah, preserve is good. Uh, I would say, I I, say sustain. sustain, I think, is better, right? Or at least sustain is better in the context we're familiar with it, with, uh, with it in, which is in the Shemona Esme, Chaim Bechesed, you sustain life with your, Chaim uh, uh, Bechesed, with Chesed, yeah. So sustains. I think preserve actually has a wrong connotation. Because then that, that makes it, um, because I'd say sustaining life um, makes sense with the system of like life and death. Yeah. But preserving life sounds like the people meant to die. That's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Although in uh, the Brachal of Machayim, they seem. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, and by the way, my, my theorizing was not just idle theorizing about the relationship between uh, this and Kilkul. Right, because kilkos you're destroying and the is to sustain, so there might be an actual like yeah. you know uh, relationship there. Uh, Machlehu. Yeah. I feel like we need like a big red button with like that like like when you press it, it's like someone's like a grammar person. Yes, I I I, uh, I have that button and it's called uh, Facebook. <laughs> my, my my grammar groups on Facebook. Yeah. Um, Machlehu. Uh, saving. Uh, this is from. Say again. Like okay, so this, this is a good point here. I, I should I should have mentioned this beforehand. So, the short so we if you look at this, you think it's machal, right? So machal is not a biblical shoresh. It was invented by the chachamim. Oh, yeah. And it's a whole question about where it comes from in um, uh, where like what it derives from, which, which like uh, biblical shoresh it derives from. So this is not from machal. It's like this is like machala. Holy Ill. illness. Yeah. Okay. So sustains. So literally, it's uh, the spirit of a person sustains his illness. Okay. We're going to see that a lot of the uh, translators don't like that. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Because uh, that sounds bad, right? Yeah. The ruach nechea and a. Good. Yeah. Let's uh, actually look at the Mitzvah Stion right now because uh, I think nechea, I, I doubt anyone knows that. <laughs> yes. So Mitsuda Sion, first of all, uh, <laughs> so Mitsuda Sion for Yichalkel said, Inyan Hasbala Bahachzaka. So uh, Saval is like to bear, uh, like to I mean, like to hold or sustain or, you know, support. And then B E A R, yeah. Uh, yes, B E A R. And then Hachzaka is strengthening. So sustains, I think, still fits with the Mitsuda Sion. But then Machlehu is Meloshan Choli. And then Nechea is Shavura. And a Ruach Nechea, a broken spirit, 
Mia Sena. Who can uh, from Nasa? Oh, uh, bear. Yeah. Bear. Okay. So, so e either this is a synonym for bear, mm -hmm. or like Isa Hashem Panave Lacha Vichunaka is more than just bearing. Uh, that's the figurative meaning. Yeah. So lift, lift up is Nasa to lift. Yeah. Okay. So who, uh, broken spirit who can bear or who can lift? Okay. Sin. Sin and Aleph is, yeah, that's what you're thinking. And then this one is, uh, uh, I think this one is actually Nun Sin Aleph. And I think the Nun falls away for some reason. I can't explain that grammatically. Yeah. Okay. So uh, actually you know I could do though. Here's another, the closest thing I could do to summoning, uh, summoning a grammar guy is Al Torah Shirashim dictionary click, right? Uh, so let me just look at that here and just make sure that we're uh, on the same page. Uh, oh, I realize I'm not sharing the all thing, whatever. We don't need to share it quite yet. Uh, so this is Mishle 18, 14. Uh, yes, yeah, so the source of Yisa Enna, according to Allah Torah, is Nasa. Yeah, lift, carry, or take. Okay. Okay, so we've got spirit of a person. I'm going to add in the word the. Okay, the spirit of a person sustains his illness and a broken spirit who can bear or who can lift it. So we did the Mitzvah Sion. So, yeah. Uh, the spirit of a person sustains his illness. So to, I just feel like it flows better. Um, or a spirit of a person sustains his illness. It doesn't sound very proverb -y if you say a. Yeah, I yeah. think you can hear it in different languages. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so then Sadigon, just to... Just to uh, point out, I don't think this is significantly different. Ruach Adam Tisbul Yisurav. So he says the spirit of a person bears his afflictions. Okay, so he translates machalehu not as like sickness, as in like sickness and health, but like something like a cause of pain, I guess. The Ruach Nechea Mies Balena. And, oops, sorry. And a broken spirit who can um, who can bear. Okay, so he does translate it as bear in both cases, even though the Hebrew is different. So that I take as a as a perush, and then the targum uh, I looked it up last night, so I think I got it. Except for uh, so ruche de gavra to sovar kurhane, so the spirit of a of a gavra of a person to sovar I think is not related to svara. Okay, uh, when I looked it up, it seemed to be it seems to be just be the translation of um, to bear of like uh, saval. Um, kurhane is his uh, his his illness. The Ruha Mechichta and a broken spirit, Man Nat Ine. I think Nat Ine is like related to like Toin and Nitan, like to uh, Toin, or not Toin and Nitan, Toin, like uh, to, to bear or carry. So I don't think the Targum is adding anything. So I'm going to delete it unless we find out something that we need to find out. Okay. And then just so we got all the other translations here. So note, note what um, our scroll says a man's spirit will sustain, and then in brackets, sustain him in his sickness. Okay, so it adds in the word him in, but who can support a broken spirit? Living Nach says a man's spirit sustains him and then in brackets through illness, but who can lift a broken spirit? And then Alter says a man's spirit sustains him in his illness, no brackets because he doesn't use brackets, but a lamed spirit who can bear. Yeah. I like that move that they make. Yeah, so it's it's hard not to make that move, right? Because uh, you, you, you know you're 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 you assume that Mishle is going with the uh, good half and bad half, and it feels like the second half is bad, or like the you know the the unfortunate one, and the first half is like good. So sustaining his illness does not seem good. Yeah, nice. Okay, so what are the questions here? Yeah, I have a few questions. Go ahead. Um, so what is the the contrast between Person spirit and well, uh, is it a broken spirit? Yeah. So like. Okay, good. Is it, it, it like what? What's the reverse quality of the person? Yes. Spirit? Okay, good. So you would expect if the second half is broken spirit, then the first half would be talking about a non well. Um, a complete spirit. A complete right? spirit, a healthy spirit. What you know, right? Yeah. So, so the question is like, is the is the first half talking about a, we'll just say excellent spirit. Okay, just for lack of a better term here. Uh, spirit or a quote unquote regular spirit. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, also, 
This is probably going to be more ideological. Um, which was the rhetorical question? Is that like? Yeah, I, I've seen that in a couple of psukim, um, and I don't have any categorical methodological insight about it. Uh, it just seems like you know, same 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 function as rhetorical questions in English. Yeah, like, is it, is, it, is it like expressing the fact that? No one sustains it. Is that how the yeah? I mean, the the shot is it's effectively saying no one can bear it or sustain it, uh, and then so I'll put it as a minor question. Okay, which is um, well, let's just, the main question here is why can't anyone uh, bear or um, yeah, why can't anyone bear a broken spirit? And then and then the minor question on that is why does he phrase this as a rhetorical question? Uh, which if we can't answer, that's fine. What is a spirit? Yeah, okay, that's going to be a major question here. Uh, what is Ruach in this context? And as you can imagine, that's going to be the big dividing point in the Mofarshan in terms of like, uh, you know, depending on how you define that, that'll determine the entire course of the uh, of, of the puzzle. Yes. <laughs> and what do we mean by sustain? Yeah, what does it mean? Uh, what does Mechalkel mean? What is, what is the illness? Okay, what yeah, is what does Mechalkel mean? And then I'll add into what does Mechalkel mean? How does, um, well, I'll put it as a different question, whatever. How does the Ruach Ish, uh, how is the Ruach, whatever, Mechalkel? Yeah, I can't. I, I, I'm just struggling with the typing in the Hebrew here with the uh, how the Hebrew English syntax. Okay, how does the spirit of a person sustain him? Sustain, sustain. I'll just say sustain. And what is machala here? And what does it mean to to be machalkel machalehu? Uh, and is that is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask that. Is it that? Um, is, is it the person being sustained or is it the, the, the illness being sustained? Oh, okay, that's another, that, that's also good. I'm gonna put that separately. I'm just gonna say for the, for this first part, what does it mean to be Mechalkel Mechalehu? Is, is it a good thing as the, sorry, as the, um, sorry, hold on a second here. Yeah, yeah, fine, we'll just leave it at that. And then, and then your question uh, was, what is being sustained in the first half? Uh, the Ish? Or his mahala, yeah, yeah, and so that, that's that's really where the uh, the the English translators, uh, you know, insert their uh, their thing that they all say is supporting sustaining him. Yeah, yeah, and you can't blame them for saying that, but it definitely doesn't fit with the the literal meaning of the puzzle. Um, well, also, what is the like the, the results seem completely unbelievable. Uh, they Who's seem completely unrelated. Well, right. I mean, I guess if you take it Saudi Gon's way, then you're talking about bearing in both halves, bearing his Yisurim and then not bearing his Ruach Mechaya or not bearing, not bearing something, you know? Hmm. Yeah, he says, uh, Ruach Adam Tisbol Yisurav, the Ruach Mechaya Mi Yisbalena. So he's, he's Tisbol for Yichalkel and Yisbalena for Yisaina. Yeah, so either way, I think this will be, um, all right, fine, yeah, so what is the, what is the subject and what are the two opposites? Yeah. Who's the audience? Who's the audience? All right. I think that pretty much covers it. Maybe we can find a couple more, but. Yeah, all right. Ready for a toughie? <laughs> yeah. All right. So any any intuitions? And look, you know, you can you can you can put bracket words wherever you want, but I this is an example where like I'm inclined to say that the to try to interpret it, the puzzle is saying that the ruach of a person sustains his illness. Because uh -huh. that's what the puzzle literally says, you know. Uh -huh. And that's that's what Sadi says also, right? Ruach Adam Tisbo Yusurav. Uh, I mean, he doesn't say he doesn't say Yichalko sustains. He says it's to bear, but he makes the object of it um, the um, Mahala as opposed to the Ish. But yeah, it's not changing that word. Yeah, so then it's right. positive. So it's it becomes positive. positive. Yeah. It becomes positive. Yeah. yeah. It becomes positive. Yeah. yeah right. You right. have to change one of those two things, I guess. It seems. 
Not necessarily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, so, maybe, yeah. yeah. I don't, by the way, I don't remember if this is what I did when I learned this over the summer, but I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah. Just like the grammar of the plus, like, so it doesn't it doesn't sound like the call the call call is going on on each. Right. Uh, you call it called the yeah, it, it would have been very easy to just add one little preposition, right? Yeah, yeah like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or 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 ruch ichi chal kalehu b'mahala or something like that, you know. Yeah. Side grammar question. Uh, I don't. The grammar button guy is not. Uh, button and thing is not working. But um, ruach is 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 uh, masculine, right? Because it's weird. Ruach is ruach is yechalkel, which is masculine, and then nechea. I would unless that's just the form of, of nechea. I was going to say nechea looks uh, feminine, but maybe maybe that's just the form of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna click on the altar thing and just see if it says anything for nechea. Uh, that it describes the unbroken ruach as ruach ish. Like yes. Ruach. Right. That's what uh, that was Isaac's first question. Oh. Maybe you were in transit at the time. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ruach nachea is feminine. Interesting. Cool. All Torah translates it as a stricken spirit. Uh, yeah. All right. Whatever. I'm going to go with uh, what is Adi going to say? No, he just said ruin the So I guess I'm going to go with him to for now. Of, uh, of Sh Shavura. Yeah, so I, I think we we kind of probably have to start with what the Ruach is, right? Yeah. And then and then that question is going to be central. Yeah. I mean, also, it's possible methodological way to read this, yeah. which is that these are two aspects of the negative, and the, and, and the positive is just, it is, you can with yes, that and that is a category in Mishlei where it just spells out the negative, yeah. uh, and uh, and then you have to infer the positive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's fair, it's preserving his illness, and if it's broken, you, you can do it. Right. So that would sound like it would be two different uh, levels of severity in the badness. Yeah. Like the regular ruach sustains your illness, but I guess the implication is that you can someone can still lift it. Well, what does that even mean for your ruach to? Affect your illness. Yeah, yeah. So this is why we have to define ruach. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess the the two candidates for ruach in general are, and this is just this is not from a particular of the mafarshim. I mean, um, Rubini Yona holds this, and Ibn Ezra holds this, and Rubina Bachia Ibn Pakuda holds this. Um, maybe some others, but this is like the in the if you're going to say that there are three souls or three parts of the soul, nefesh, ruach, and neshama, if you're going to go with that classification, so then ruach is the psychological. Okay. okay. Um, and nefesh is the animalistic, like uh, instinctual, and then neshama is like the uh, is the safe hell. So that's one. So one thing is to say ruach is like the psyche. Okay. Uh, and that's by the way, that's literally. I mean, you could say this, I guess, for a lot of the things. But um, uh, psyche. Let me see if I, the English word psyche comes from. Uh, and I guess all the words come from this. I was gonna say because English word psyche it comes from psuche which I think is Greek or Latin or something like that, which means breath. Um, and, uh, but really all the Hebrew terms for soul come from breath or wind. So that doesn't really help us there. Right, right Nishima and Nafash, right, Nafash, um, uh -huh. Nofesh. And Ruach is wind. And Ruach is wind, yeah. Right. Yeah, um, so that's one interpretation is Ruach could be psyche. The other like go-to interpretation is Ruach sometimes means, um, uh, means the safe hell, right? Like in, I'm gonna quote a Pasuk that is like, subject to a lot of Mahalokas here, but when Hashem is going to destroy uh, the world in the, before the Mabal, he says, Lo yadon ruchi ba'adam b'shagam hu basar. So my ruchi, God's talking, my spirit will not be done, uh, will, not, will not judge. And so there's some who say that that's referring to God himself, but some say that ruach Hashem there is the Tzal You know, that the, the, the man was in a state where the Tzal Melokim was not ruling, was not being done, and therefore... Um, God had to destroy stuff. And I'm sure there's other more simple something you can get from that. But so Ruach is going to be either psyche or intellect or some variety of those things. So the, I think that's like the initial crossroads that we might have to take. Yeah, I was thinking Ruach, you know, my thought was uh, closer to the psyche. Yeah. I don't know if I was quite thinking psyche, but basically, you know, something in that realm. Yeah. Um, and it's possible what he's saying is, you know, regarding the uh, seeming split of it, it's either 
is regular or bad, that he could be saying that it's in a certain sense binary, that your your ruach is either yeah, it's either like excellent or it's broken in some fashion. Right. right. It's not completely broken necessarily, yeah. but it's at least partially broken. Yeah. So ruach ish just means an intact psyche, which is the same thing as saying a perfected psyche or you know, yeah, whole psyche. And then anything short of that is broken. Okay, I, I think that's that that is a good like way to to deal with that question there of uh, it's either functional or dysfunctional, right? right? Yeah. And we're not really talking about gradations in like you know there's not like ruach chachama uh, like in this you know whatever like or like you know matzliach or something you know. Um, by the way, I just thought of a question, another question, uh, and this is not coming from the puzzle. I just want to check something out though. Um, I think doesn't David Amelach use broken spirit as a good thing? I think he uses broken ruach. I just have to. Um, uh, ruach nishbar v'nilkei alukim lo I think that's the. Yeah, yeah, it's right here. Um, it's in Nun Aleph. Uh, so it says. Um, so this is in. Is this the? Yeah, this is the one where he confesses about uh, the hate with uh, with uh, Basheva. Um, so he says. Uh, uh, so he says, I'm not going to, you don't desire a, uh, a korban, otherwise I would give it. Uh, you don't want an ola. And he says, so what are the offerings to God? Ruach nishbara, a broken spirit, a broken spirit, lev nishbar venidke, a lev that is broken and and crushed, which is the same. It's spelled differently than nidke here is without an olive, but I think it's the same thing. Elokim lo sivzeh, God will not despise. So that, that's a good thing, <laughs> you know? So like, uh, so I, I, I'm not, this is not a, a, a cushion on what you're saying, but like, like in this Pasuk, it's clearly bad, but it might not even be like all the time, like it might not be bad intrinsically, like, you know, cause Dovin Melk is at least saying it there. I'm just gonna list this question just in case we come back to it. Um, uh, I, I didn't notice this last time I was learning. Dovin Melch in Tehillim, Nun Aleph, uh, um, indicates that ruach nishbar v'lev nidke is a good thing which God desires. Yeah, all right, fine. That's a, that's a side question. Okay, so let's go with your your binary thing, right? Of uh, it's oh, and then psyche also, right? And I think do do you have a reason why you, your mind assumed there was a psyche? I think it was just the idea of it sustaining you. Oh yeah. Something that your psyche does. Yeah. You know, a strong psyche. I hear that. To, you know, keep you lifted. And, and a broken psyche is the most burdening thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I got it. Cause I felt, I feel like it, it's a lot more normal to talk about a broken spirit psychologically than say a broken spirit intellectually. Like yeah, yeah. what does that mean? You know? So that's why I'm inclined to think it's the, uh, it's the psyche. Yeah. So the psyche of a person will sustain his illness or sustain him in his illness. We still have to figure that out. And then a broken psyche, who can lift? And that's now the question is going to be, what is the different, what is a broken psyche? Why can't it be lifted? What would it mean to lift it? And then what is the first half saying? Is it negative or positive? I mean, and th this time I'd be inclined to say that it's positive if we're taking that approach because it would be weird to say, well, if you have a functional psyche, that will sustain your illness. And if you have a broken psyche, then no one can help you. Well, then what am I supposed to do with my psyche, you know? Don't get sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the moral of the story. Don't get sick. Hmm. Well, if there is, wear a mask. Then... <laughs> yeah. Well, lifting your psyche to me seems to imply like, sorry, let's say a psyche in need of lifting, not, not necessarily a broken psyche, but a psyche in need of lifting would seem to be like someone who's just psychologically debilitated or like sad or depressed or, or you know, uh, burdened to use side to go and thing, you know? Um, so if we can get a clear picture of that, then maybe we can see what it would mean to to break it, you know, we get a better insight into what a broken spirit is. 
I mean, it's hard not to think of the English thing and uh, like broken spirited. And I, maybe, maybe that's a good thing. Like maybe, maybe it is the same muscle here, but what would you say in, in broken spirit means in English? You're sad. Yeah, you lost, but you lost your motivation. Yeah, I, I feel like it's 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 sadness, but with like no hope on the horizon or no like drive or no you know, like there's like a static, apathetic. stalled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't even know. It might be stronger than apathetic. I because you, you said lost your motivation, it, but it's like it, losing motivation due to the presence of a negative. It's not just like I'm not interested anymore. You wouldn't say, oh, so you're broken spirited, you know. Broken spirit is like something bad happened that prevents you from like like going on or, or giving another effort. Yeah. That's it, like it's, it's like despair. Yeah. Um, but not like actively like where you're like despair is a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I what was, what was uh, I interrupted you with my exclamation of approval. No, that's just, that's just that. <laughs> yeah. Um here's another question, by the way, just to add to this. And I don't know if this is a good question or not. What are you supposed to do if you have a broken spirit, according to this? Mm. I mean, according to him, it's like, okay, that's it. <laughs> You're done for, you know? What is, is broken spirit the same as what would you say? Like this despair? Like I don't know. Like, no. But whatever category he's talking about, right. then uh, then what, what is that guy supposed to do? I have a different way okay. to read it. Um, I, I, I still don't know how to spend the first half of the classic, but it's with Ruach meaning intellect. Okay. So, um, so the second half is that a um, person who has a broken intellect, like they're making, let's say, like a systemic mistake in there. Okay, that's a good definition of broken intellect. Yeah, like let's say, like they. Um, but like I think they, co- co- correlation is causation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. they, yeah then no one else can come in and and fix your mistake, like your mistaken understanding. Because if, if you just like don't know a particular fact or mm. something, then um, then someone else can, can correct you and then you can see that and then, and then move on. Yeah. But if you are making a systemic mistake in your thinking, no one else can fix your, your thought process. I hear. Okay, that, that's good. So was it, so then now the question is going to be what does that have to do with sickness? Yeah, in the first half, yeah. I mean, now look. Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. Can we translate it? Ruch ishi machalehu that the spirit of a person sustains its illness, meaning the illness of the ruach. Because then maybe yes, maybe you can say what uh, you could you could take that in your way. So then what would the sickness? So then, this would this could still be taking saying two bad things, yeah. right? So the uh, so you've got the sickness of the intellect and the, and the breaking of the intellect, a broken intellect. So broken intellect, you're saying, is like a systemic mistake. Yeah. Um, and I guess the sickness, the sickness is that you're is that you're um, like making like a non-systemic mistake, but you but you um, you won't like ever like see your own so uh, how about this maybe can you say the sickness of the intellect is when you're operating on a false premise so if you're operating on a false premise then that will sustain itself because it's a premise that's what premises do <laughs> right is that they they they're the basis of like other uh, uh other thoughts and conclusions so that's one level of like intellectual deficiency but then a broken intellect no one can lift meaning that, that it can't be fixed because the apparatus itself is uh is broken. So let's think it like if we read it that way, let's just see if we can get a clear idea from there. <laughs> that was just like a structural like uh, attempt. And then, uh, well, uh, like, I think it, if we, if we, like, we should think about what the, what the opposite is and, and, and what this means for. Yeah. And this also, I feel like, makes me feel better about 
ditching the bracketed insertions of the English translations, because there's no need to say that anymore. Like uh, uh, a, a sick, an in, a man's intellect sustains its own sickness is how you would translate this. I'm gonna actually type this out here. Um, a man's intellect sustains its, its own sickness and a broken intellect who can, who can raise up. Even though we don't know our, our idea yet, I know where, uh, where we can look for examples. America election season. <laughs> I feel like this is <laughs> happening a lot, even though we don't know exactly what this is. So, so just maybe take one move in terms of sickness and breaking. Sickness is something that like by nature, it heals, or at least it can heal. Like, like a sick, sickness does not mean a permanent crippling, whereas a broken thing is like, that does not naturally get better. So can we figure out two categories of, of intellectual deficiency that fit that description? Yeah. So and I, I think the way we've been saying it is like along those lines, but yeah. 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 So let's say you have um, a premise that all people from the opposite party are evil. Yeah. Like, um, so like. Okay, this is good. Yeah, so let's say, let's say you're a Republican and you, you assume all Democrats are evil. Yeah. Because they, they, like, they clearly want to destroy the country and whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you meet someone. And so you, when you're just thinking about it, you're, not, you're never going to come to the conclusion that they aren't evil because you're walking in with that premise. You're walking in with that premise. Right. So you're not like constantly analyzing other premises. It's right. Just not, it's just not possible for people to do that. Right. Um, so, so therefore, any any uh, right. I mean, the, the, so that that is what we what, what, what uh, the direction we're going before, right? Is that yeah. any if you walk in with a false premise, then that's just going to sustain itself. the The view yeah. of the in, the view of the world that the intellect gives you based on its false premise will be self sustaining. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I would say that if you, well, let's say you meet someone and then they're, they're like a very nice guy and, and you're having like very great conversation. You like the idea that you like this person um, and, and like he seems good and then you find out that he's a Democrat. Yeah. Then like that could help you, that could help like really outside treatment like that. Could, yeah. Could help heal it. Okay, good. Um, but, the, but the second half is that if you have, um, have a like broken like systemic way that you're thinking about things then um, outside evidence isn't uh, isn't going to be able to to fix that yeah yeah, I mean, I think the example, just because I'm, I'm thinking about the political examples here, and, I, and this might be a bad example because it's hard to define, but the people who are prone to conspiracy theories, conspiracy, conspiracy theories is not just a sickness of the intellect. That's like a systemic way of, like, if you walk into something with the, with the premise that, like, everyone's in on some sort of, like, manipulation of the facts, that's just, that's more than just a particular premise that is false that's like a false way of approaching data you know yeah overall yeah and there's and like it's, yeah it's not like anyone can can help you like fix your the way that you're thinking about it because... right or like here's another example from our Chumash here from the Ibn Ezra's thing uh actually this sorry it's gonna be from this week's Chumash here <laughs> 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 yeah I forgot I forgot my time um but uh but so the next approach uh that he's we're going to take up uh, the third approach is people who take everything in the Torah allegorically um and so that would be to me an example of a systemic lack because there's no there's no way you're going to get out of that premise from the 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 so I mean not only does it sustain its own sickness but like if you just walk in with the premise that 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 everything is allegorical, like there's just there's just no way out of that way of thinking. Like that's just, you know. What I mean, why is it why isn't that just a premise that you're going? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking now. Also, <laughs> yeah. I I got there because I was saying it's a it's a systemic, it's like an epistemological thing, not an epistemological in terms of like how you get knowledge from the world, but in terms of like you know, Torah epistemology. Um, that's where I got it. I'm not, not answering the question yet. Right, right. Yeah. I guess I'd say there's like, 
factual premises and methodological premises. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good distinction. Yeah. Well, again, that's a methodological premise. Right. Well, let's say a factual premise about how certain how, how people are or something. Then you can, if, it, if you have a factual premise, then you're not going to notice that you have it or, or, or um, until like something like contradicts it and yeah. you have to re-examine it. But um, you have a methodological premise. Uh, you can, like there's nothing like um, no one can like fit, like show something to fix your methodology. Yeah. Yeah, the um, just in terms of the way that the sickness lodges in the mind versus the way that the mind is broken. Uh, the, you said something that, that made me think about like how to describe it experientially. Hold on. Right. Meaning if you have a sickness of the mind, which is just a false premise, then theoretically, all you need is to be shown that that premise is false. And then that gives you an opportunity to uh, to, to to question it. But then if your whole methodology is off, if your whole like you're not going to question your methodology. That's the, I, th I think that's how you would draw the line. And, and maybe like, maybe there are tiers within this also. Like, in other words, let's say a person is operating with a certain universe methodology that they apply to everything. So they would be in the second half of this pasuk. And maybe you can get them into a discussion where then they treat their methodology as a subject mm -hmm. that they're examining. And then like, they could see that that's operating based on sickness. In other words, it's not like, it's not like one belief falls into one category or another, and that's it. You know, like what is a, what is a machla for one person could be a ruach nechea for another person, depending on on how it affects the, the course of their thinking. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, like how basic is the premise? Yeah, okay. yeah, like, uh, or, or whether you're you're discussing it or not. Like, let's say for example, um, let me think of an example here. Yeah, this is a this is an area where, where I think defining this very precisely would be very good for us. <laughs> Not that other areas aren't like that, but I feel like this is like critical to to this idea because this is the entire distinction that the Pasuk is making. Yeah. Um, just I don't know just about the way that we've been discussing it. Yeah. Is that like we've been talking about it as a it's impossible for it to be fixed at all. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's true. You're right. It's I just think, who can lift it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's that no, no, ex, no, like the first half, external factors can, 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 cause, can cause you to fix your yeah. thing. But here, no one else can do it. Yeah. Only you can. Right. Well, only you can, let's say, decide to um, consciously re examine your methodology yeah. and change it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was thinking of it more in terms of like the, the second half, like in terms of like like fallacious like kind of reasoning. Mm -hmm. like, in terms of like, I don't know, like if you like whatever, like, oh, this guy is like an important guy, so I'm gonna listen to him, mm -hmm. but not like for any real reason, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that those kinds of things like are more um sort of like you can't really be like you can't be argued out of those yeah. because they are the basis of how you yeah yeah <laughs> so it's funny because like the uh the way that it, that plays out is the same way that what we're saying plays out but we're going to a more fundamental level uh -huh. and yours is a more uh, conservative uh reading in other words so you have like this you have a false fact and that's uh that, that you're operating on as a premise that's ruach, that's the mahala then you've got a fallacious way of thinking uh, and that's what you're saying is the rule of mm -hmm. but then the other way we can say it is a fallacious way of thinking and an entire like systemic, uh, like underlying epistemological flaw. I, th th that one is, that one's simpler and then is close to what you, when we, when you initially said your idea and we came up with that. Which one's that one? Uh, Zevs. No, 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 no. Oh, the, um, that, uh, that rule of is just when you're operating based on a fallacy. No, but I mean, that could be a system. Like, like like, right. Like, incorrect fact or incorrect? Like a logical fallacy, like a fallacious uh, way of uh, of reasoning. But if you just don't know about the ad hominem fallacy. Yeah. And then you're just constantly falling into that. Right. Thing. Yeah. See, I think my, my difficulty with that, though, is like you can point that out to someone, you know? Right. Um, right. Well, no, I think mean, you said that's the first time, right? Well, 
No, no, that's what we were saying. We were saying that that'd be the first half. But you, you were saying, you, you, you were saying that this is for the broken one, right? Yeah. Or were you not? Yeah, no, I was. But I guess that. Yeah, because I mean, like, you can say, like, if you think about it, the person, like, like, uh, is an argument like tied to a person or or, or not? And then, right. and, like, you know, how do like, you can no, say, like, but let's say someone else makes the exact same argument, is it like, yeah, you have to really like, examine every person's motivations in, in order to, right? And then, but I feel like, like, like it's going in with that premise, like, you're not going to be able to argue them because it'll just be like, oh, yeah, like, you're just, uh, who are you? You can't, uh, well, you can't yeah. argue with me, you know? Maybe I'll take a step back and just, um, and, and like, get them to, like, think about what they're going to do. Like, uh, I, I think that it's, it's cool. you're saying it's possible. Uh, I thought of just two more examples, uh, not not to dismiss what you're saying, but just uh, I thought of two more examples of the approach that we we're taking with the more underlying thing. So, and these are obscure. Well, one of them is an obscure example. Uh, in the pre-Socratics, there was the I've got always forget who says what, but there was the guy who says that um, change is completely an illusion and everything Parmenides. is. Say again, Parmenides. Parmenides, and then Heraclitus was the other one who said that everything is change and there's nothing permanent. Okay. So like, if you're walking into looking at the world that way, you know, like in masquerades is a theory, right? But if you're walking into the world with that, there is literally nothing that you can be shown that will change your mind. Like, it is all like, if you say that there, that all change is an illusion, so then anything you show them that's a change, right. you're just going to like dismiss as, uh, as, as, as like, you know, that's just our perception. That's just, you know, it's like a fun, it's like an axiom, you know? Um, another example of this is, uh, is, um, like, I don't know which branches of Christianity have this, but like the branches of Christianity that have faith as a basis, uh, like, like unquestioning faith as a basis of, of, of their opinion is that there's nothing you can do to disabuse a person of a notion that they're accepting based on faith, because to, that's just going to prompt them to say, well, I just have to, like, I, I just have, to, I, I believe it. I just believe it. Or I have to muster up more faith to, you know, like that's like the type of, to me, that's stronger than a particular fallacy because a fallacy you can show the person, you could either uproot a fallacy by forcing them to, uh, to confront a contradiction. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, for example, a person, you know, uh, believes everything that, uh, that, that their presidential candidate says, uh, and, and like just at, at face value. And then he says to believe the other guy, you know? So then that's like, you know, right. you can like force them into cognitive dissonance that way, or you can just confront them with the evidence uh, that shows them that evidently like, you know, um, evidently like your, uh, your, your COVID symptoms are not caused by the full moon because it's not a full moon and you have COVID symptoms, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, but, but uh, an axiom, like there is nothing you can, like there it's what you were saying before, is the only one who can lift them is them in their own minds by undoing that, that, uh, that axiom. No one can like lift it up from outside. Cool. So it's different, the, the distinction is that it was between a premise and, a, and an axiom? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. yeah. So like, I guess I'd say, a premise is something that's like that that you layer onto your the way that your thought process works. Yeah. Whereas axiom is like is part of the way that you think about things. Yeah. 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 Hmm. All right. So let's cool. stop here for today. And what I'd like to do is tomorrow um, see if we can find Mafar from that support this way of thinking. That say the, the ruach is a uh, is the seichel, and then I'd like to take the other approach tomorrow and say that the ruach is the psyche, and see where we go with that. Okay, sounds good. Cool.